Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, we have some cool beers. Yes. No, I'm not gonna do them all on camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a huge thank you going out to Matt. I'm not gonna say his last name, not sure if he wanted me to, but he came on down here to Neptune Beach to see friends and family. Neptune Beach is kind of like east and a little north of Jacksonville and very north of Jack's Beach. Jacksonville Beach and Jacksonville are not the same city. When you first move to Jacksonville, you kind of think they are. They're not. But he brought me some amazing beers to enjoy, try. I'm dying for Pliny. Yes, that's right. This will be my first Pliny the Elder. But I'm holding it back. I'm holding it back. I told Drew, we'll taste test it together. And I know my Pliny the Elder clone is getting a little old and I was looking to you know, dump the last part of it because there's not much left, but I think we'll do a taste test and compare it even though it's a little old. This is much newer than what I think I have in the keg there. But I just wanted to show you the beers and huge thank you again going out to Matt, huge. At my door, 8.30 this morning, it was a little late night before, so I was a little tired. Hadn't even really started much on my first cup of coffee, but it's all good. Wish you could have stayed. Wish I had things a little cleaned up, a little more organized, but yeah, getting ready to go on vacation for a week. So first of all, we have row two, Hill 56, the story of Simcoe Pale Ale. Sitting at, I think it's like 5.4 or 5.6%. Dying to try that. It's Simcoe, come on. Pliny the Elder, we've all heard of it. Some of us have enjoyed it. I will eventually be able to enjoy it here in the near future. This is actually the one of the exceptions. This is from Murfreesboro, Illinois, called Big, Mu Big Muddy Brewing, and it is a blueberry blonde. Yeah, huge blueberry fan. My oldest, Drew, likes blackberries, but he likes any kind of berries, so we may share that together. Then we have The Butcher, and he's got a lot of these from Hop Butcher I've never heard of, but they all sound really cool. This one's probably the most calm out of all of them, and it is a pale ale, again, sitting at 6%. It is a mosaic hopped pale ale, and I never used to think mosaic was that amazing until I started brewing with it. I love Mosaic, it's a great hop. This is the one I'm looking to have like right now. Yeah, it is called Clear IPA, also from the Hop Butcher. And it is all the classics, Citra, Centennial, Chinook, Cascade, Columbus. It's sitting right at 7.25%. Those are a lot of hops that have been around for a long time. Citra, maybe not quite as long as some of the others, but They've been around for a long time. They're not expensive hops. And they're the C's, you know, the seven C's, which actually that's one, two, three, four. That's five. So in the comments, tell me what the other two are. Uh, I got one in my head, but yeah, this the seven C's, there's five C's here, but they're great hops. They've been around forever, but they're just great hops. They're not expensive and they do a great job. I will say Columbus, I like for bittering and I like to mix it with some others. Centennial, true to my heart. Chinook with all the lovely grapefruit. Citra, we all know. And Cascade. Cascade, I mean, they're finding new uses for that, especially with where you're using it for your thialized, thi you know, and throwing it in the mash. But yeah, this is the one I'm going to have right now. And then we have this I tried to pronounce this so many times, it just has to be the way it's written. It's Emmett's Showers of Sparks. Just doesn't seem to read the way I would expect. It's also from the Hop Butcher. And it is Mosaic, Sabro, and Galaxy. It's a double Indian Pale Ale. And it's kind of funny. It's 7.5%. And if you look at the GBHC, whatever, if you look at the guidelines, 7.5 is like the top of IPA, American and the very entry for a double IPA. So it could go either way. They're calling it a double. They got a ton of hops. I think they deserve to. Uh, don't even know what the hell I had in there. I think I was taste testing something. I've been moving some beers to kegs and getting things ready, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this video testing the clear IPA. And it's funny, the wrapped and splitting. I mean, it's, it's bursting with hops. You know what I'm saying? Ah. Pretty clear, very light. Wondering if it's a Pilsner or if they used a pale ale and added some corn sugar to get that light, maybe a light dry. As I say, you know, cold and bitter, I love my beer that way and I know a lot of people that way. I can tell you right now, the aromas are nice. 
They're what I expect from a classic American IPA. Got a little haze going on, so it's not that clear, but hey. It's actually pretty mild. I would have expected it to be much more bitter, much more in my face. Maybe they're all late hop additions because it's very mild, very smooth. It doesn't say it's a cold IPA, but it's definitely on the border there for flavor. Extremely uh, sessionable. Does not taste like seven and a quarter, right out of maybe six and a half to seven, but yeah. Cheers. Thank you again, Matt. We'll do a video, like I said, on the Pliny. Very nice. Cheers. Appreciate y'all.